Hi, everybody. I'm Cullen. And I'm Sarah. And this is Wilbur. Wilbur. And this is your Book Madness Round 4 recap. We had the championship matches for each of the brackets in this round, starting with the old classics, To Kill a Mockingbird versus Pride and Prejudice. How do you choose? What do you do? Uh, well, you chose, and you chose To Kill a Mockingbird means it is the winner of the whole darn Neil Classics bracket. Were you surprised on that one? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. That's, a, that's, the, that's the way I picked it, which yeah. it, I went back and watched the tape just to, you know, so to hold, our, to hold us accountable for our predictions. It actually, it's actually right. opposite of what you picked. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I was probably just wishful thinking, you know, wish, wishful that Pride and Prejudice would win, but... Do you like Pride and Prejudice better? I do. Well, yeah, I think I do. Okay. It's hard to say, but. Yeah. I know. It's very close, and they're both great. It's like, you know, and I know that the people voting probably felt that way, too. It's like, just because I'm picking this one doesn't mean that I don't like the other one. Right. It's just. You're not voting against it. It's either I like this one more, or I, you know, I believe this one's more deserving. Right. And, so yeah, I'm not surprised. I was a little surprised at the margin of victory. Like To Kill a Mockingbird just wiped the floor with Pride and Prejudice. It was really it was okay, not that close. is surprising. Not close at all. I think there were a handful of votes for Pride and Prejudice, maybe like four or five. Okay. Total, and I think we had close to thirty votes on that one. Wow! So we had a a lot of participation. Too. Yeah, people usually come out in force for the classic votes. People got opinions about those. Yeah. And then actually on Saturday, uh, someone was at the library because uh, we just started doing curbside pickup at Bimber Public Library. I'll talk to you more about that later. But she was calling in and uh, she mentioned the bracket. And she's like, I can't believe uh, Pride and Prejudice is losing so badly. Well, did she vote? I think she did. I think she was one of our few Pride and Prejudice votes. Man. So uh, what more can you do? You get your one vote and that's it. Unless you go yeah. around, uh, you know, stumping for your favorites. And right. <laughs> she wasn't standing in over. front of the library with a picket sign. No, she was not. <laughs> thankfully, uh, <laughs> Or, you know, creating a bunch of fake Facebook accounts and then voting. Yeah, each one there of you go. Accounts. That's a good idea. Nobody do that. But <laughs> nobody do that. <laughs> I don't think anyone's invested enough to do that. <laughs> it is an you idea. never know. Wait, did you say, were you surprised by this or no? I, well, I may be not surprised, but a little disappointed maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, To Kill a Mockingbird's a great book. I just have a fondness for Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. I understand, but really there's, there's no, there are no losers here. No, definitely not. Except for Pride and Prejudice, which lost. <laughs> That means that To Kill a Mockingbird will go on to the final four, and we will tell you more about those matchups in a few minutes. But next, we had the Phenoms Bracket Championship, which came down to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone versus the Hunger Games. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, we knew that was going to happen, right? We did. So Harry Potter is your winner, but yes, um, both predicted Harry Potter to win. So we were both right. Yeah, and again, no no losers there. They're both great. They are. How, how close was that? Not. Not? No, no. It's funny, like, some of these, like, championship matches were uh, some of the least close matchups we've had. Okay. Like, I think it was closer between Harry Potter and The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we had family divided on this one. We, I think there was a vote for... Uh, Harry Potter and then someone else in the family came in and they're like no Hunger Games and then they, you know they had to so we might have started a, a, a fight yeah well, I think we did which was really one of our goals with the... <laughs> yeah and and since they're in quarantine that's that's great <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> well, lots of family togetherness uh, arguing yeah. over books well I think thankfully in this case I think it was uh, like a, a mom uh, with an adult child so I don't think they're oh in the same house that's good yeah there all right but you know it could still make we're it not up. breaking up a marriage or anything <laughs> no <Thank you. laughs> 
Well, maybe, maybe we are, but if, if we are, then we, we don't know about it. <laughs> right, not please yet. Don't, please don't tell us if that's the case. Right. <laughs> if this content, if this contest ruins your relationship. <laughs> so we picked this to happen. We're not surprised by it. Uh, we did have someone on, uh, on Facebook in the comments during the vote mention, I think it was Alicia, uh, it was kind of touching on the, you know, the nuance that we have talked about before with, with Harry Potter and how you view it in this contest. Like, is it just this book or is it the whole series? And so, and I guess you would apply to the Hunger Games too. Is it just the first book or is it the whole series? And so what she was yeah. saying that if, you know, taken as a whole, like series to series, like it's Harry Potter. But if you're looking at just these two books, in her opinion, uh, Hunger Games is the better book than Sorcerer's Stone. Okay. That's a fair argument. Like I yeah. Think you could All right. Wrong case for that. But didn't stop people uh, from overwhelmingly picking Harry Potter. Yeah. It's going to go on to the final four. Our next bracket was Recent Hotness and the championship match for that one. Alouve versus the Nightingale. And the Nightingale is our winner, and it will advance to the final four. It is our recent hotness bracket champion. Were you surprised about that one? What What did we? Yeah, guess? I was. I was personally because on this one, I picked Uve. You picked Nightingale. So, oh, yay me! What do I win? Well, we have to tally. <laughs> hold up! Hold up! Now, we have to tally up. You know all of the, you know matchups and see. Who came out ahead, if any? Yeah. But with this one, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, I and maybe that's my bias. We talked last time about how much I love Frederick Backman and all of his books, and so I was pretty confident in my in my Uve pick. But it did not. It was close. Like this was a closer one than those other two blowouts. I, mean, I think there was just a few votes separating the two of them. Okay. In my through my you know Frederick Backman loving eyes, I was surprised by. What about you? What made you pick the well, Nightingale other than... I think I just went up against you to yeah. pick the opposite to, mm -hmm. because I haven't read either of these. So um, I couldn't really go off of an opinion. I think you, I just, were, you, were just, you were just picking against me. Yeah, just challenging it. It worked out for you. It worked yeah, out. it sure did. A, a successful gambit on your part. <laughs> now, like now I'm definitely gonna have to read it like I kept saying I'm gonna read it but now that it's gone all the way and won the whole bracket you have to yeah I gotta I gotta see what this book is all about. our last bracket was the goodness bracket and that featured ready player one versus the Guernsey literary and potato pill pie society all right ready player one we picked that too didn't we we did. We both picked that one to win. Yeah. That, that means, uh, yeah. No We're bra still tied. That's what that means, right? They are, yeah. So no, bra <laughs> no bragging rights in this bracket. Dang it. How close was that one? How uh, close was that one? That one, actually, that one was close, too. That one was close. I think it was maybe like four or five votes separating them. Okay. You know, I guess you could say it's a comfortable margin. But compared to our other matchups in this round, like that was that that's a nail biter compared to the, the first two matchups we had. Yeah. And actually, like when voting started, it was really like the I think the first few votes that came out were for Guernsey and then it stayed pretty close um, initially. And then Ready Player One pulled away later. Yeah, people are getting passionate about it. Yeah. Well, it was people. Some people in the comments had mentioned being conflicted about it. And so I think it was a close one for some people. Uh, I'm not surprised, obviously, I picked it that way. But I guess maybe I have, maybe I underestimated Guernsey a little bit. I, I probably didn't uh, have a good feel for how beloved it is. A lot of people yeah. like it. And I, I remember saying that I read it, we did it for book club, and I liked it. It was an enjoyable read, but I wouldn't like put it in my top books ever or anything like that right but yeah i i, I underestimated it so i'm sorry guernsey <laughs> you better write a letter yeah <laughs> write a letter an apology uh, 
<laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, uh, that book is written in letter form. So that's that's the joke there. Uh, that, that would be very funny if I wrote an apology letter. Sorry, Guernsey. Good, good job. Good job. Well played. Well played. But Ready Player One is our winner, and it will go on to the final four. And then back to our, I guess, our wager. Yeah, we ended up tying. So I had the first bracket. We had the same correct pick in the second one. You were correct on the third one, and then we had the same correct pick on this one. So no winner on that. I don't know what we do. Uh, maybe we roll that over to the final four. And see. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll talk okay. you up on that. But speaking of the final four, it. these are our final four matchups. We've got To Kill a Mockingbird versus Ready Player One, and then Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone versus the Nightingale. How do you see this going? Uh, I guess my first thought is this just doesn't really seem fair. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem fair or uh, it just kind of seems silly a little bit when you stack it up like this. Right. Have, you know, and the, you know, and I don't want to influence anyone's vote or anything as if I could uh, or, you know, change your way of thinking about it, but it's just like, all right, To Kill a Mockingbird, universally acknowledged classic book. Versus Ready Player versus One. Versus Ready Player One. A good, yeah, no doubt. A good book. A very good book. A popular book. Uh, a well-written, enjoyable book. But it's against, like, one of the consensus best books ever. It's like, right. what do you do? I am picking To Kill a Mockingbird to win this. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I think no on, on, on that matchup, it's definitely Mockingbird. I think Harry Potter is going to take it um, against Nightingale. But I don't know. I mean, who knows? People are going to get really passionate here in this last couple rounds. That's the hope, you know, yeah. that they do. Uh, yeah, I'll take, I'm taking Harry Potter. I'm taking yeah. Harry Potter for sure. And I'll be surprised if it's not another landslide victory. Or what did we call those previously? A, a, a real Stevie Nixing. <laughs> <laughs> Though I guess we should call it, a, you know, a Fleetwood Macking because that was wasn't that that was actually a Fleetwood Mac song. It wasn't like a Stevie Nicks. So it was. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> We're leaving all that in. We're leaving all that in the video. I might have to uh, close the store here. Were they growling at each other? I thought I heard like... Yeah, a... they're they're getting... One wants to play and the other one is uh, not feeling it, so... Okay. So I was going to say, I was like, there's, where is there an old lady moaning? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was just the dogs. Just the dogs getting mad. Well, we can't break our tie because we, we have picked the same... Winners again, we yeah. yeah, just for the record, Maybe we'll have to, to do it on the last one, yeah. Assuming we have a different pick, we might have to do it just, just for fun, but yeah, yeah, for the record, we both picked to kill a mockingbird and we both picked Harry Potter to win and go on to the championship. So, yeah, the winner of each matchup in the final four will go on to the championship, the championship of the whole tournament, and they'll face off later this week. It's going to be book madness. It is. It's going to be book <laughs> madness. Before we talk about when voting resumes, uh, another order of business, our bracketology contest. We never, ever called it that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fair because we didn't use those words. <laughs> but what we did after the first round of the tournament a few weeks ago, uh, we let you fill out a bracket and make your predictions figure out how the rest of the rounds are going to turn out. So we had 32 books left and we had you predict uh, that round, which was round two, all the way through the round we just did, round four. We didn't include the final four in it for some reason. Um, that, was, that was an oversight, sorry. But uh, so we just graded you on how well you predicted winners from round two through round four. And we had some people take us up on that and we tallied, uh, how many you got correct? I think there were 24 choices to make. So uh, a perfect score would have been 24. And our winner with 19 correctly predicted results, Kim Moore. Congrats, Kim Moore. 
Good. All right, good job. You got 19 correct. I think we had at least one person get 18 and then a person, maybe a couple of 17s as well. So it was close. Close, yeah. Had 19 correct answers. Uh, Kim Moore, a librarian, so she knows her books. And All right. She had an unfair advantage in this contest. And for your efforts, for your success and your accuracy, you're going to get a gift certificate to a cookie decorating class. Taught by Cookies Please, uh, our favorite cookie maker, vendor, and just general person. Uh, Jennifer Evans runs Cookies Please, and she does great stuff for us. I mean, anybody who hires her, she does great stuff, but she's been very generous with the library, um, helping us out with cookies for our events. You might have seen them. Um, she's made lots of Dr. Seuss cookies. We've seen her make Harry Potter cookies, the Spelling Bee cookies, any event. Uh, any occasion, she can make custom cookies, and they're always beautiful looking, and they're always delicious. Uh, and I wish I had one or a bunch. I know, now I want cookies. Right now. You've never had one? No, I don't think I've had any of her cookies. Goodness. Oh, man. Okay, we got to change that. <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta fix that real soon. Got to call her right now. Mm -hmm, yeah, we call her. Get on the phone while I'm talking. She does uh, cookie, cookie decorating classes. In addition to making cookies, she does decorating classes where she teaches you how you can also make beautiful cookies. And yeah, what Kim is getting uh, for winning our bracket contest is a spot in one of those classes. And so, Kim, we're going to email you a gift certificate that you can redeem with Jennifer. Uh, if I remember correctly, she has a class. The next upcoming class is in July. I think it's July 2nd, and it's going to be like a 4th of July decorating theme. But you don't have to use that one if you don't want to or can't. You can redeem it at a teacher class. So uh, we'll send you that certificate, and it'll have more details in there. But congratulations. Good job. Very well done. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and thanks to everybody who participated in that. Uh, even if you didn't win, we hope that you had fun. Voting for round five starts tomorrow on 5-5, five five, Cinco de Mayo, I believe you would call that, right? Yeah? Yes. Yes. So that is tomorrow night. Uh, we got the first matchup in the final four. It's going to be a real short round. We will likely be back with a recap, short recap, after this short round. But yeah, voting starts tomorrow night. It's on Facebook, like always. Just uh, We'll post it usually around 8 o'clock on our Facebook page. Just go there. And vote for your favorite. Uh, tell your friends to vote. Tell your family to vote. Uh, but not if it's going to cause problems, as we talked about earlier. <laughs> do not create a bunch of uh, fake Facebook accounts and do extra voting. <laughs> your one vote. Uh, you can be passionate about it. You can, you know, tell us in the comments like why you're right and everyone else is wrong. But just get you might sway some people. Yeah, you might. You might. People might see that and be like, "Wow, I didn't know." That this change their vote at the last minute they might they with might. your passion yes be passionate in all that you do especially this so get out and vote um, we're down to almost the very end of this thing so if you've been with us this whole time stay with us till the end and let's 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 crown a champion here till next time y'all take care vote bye <laughs>